mother, as a prophetess, as a teacher, as an ambassador. She has done so much for so many of us and many of us that are in here only survived because we heard some of those messages that she preached. We came out of prison. We came out of strongholds. Come on. Some of y'all came out of lesbianism, homosexuality. Come on here. And last but not least, we came out of bondage. Come on. I want y'all to help me celebrate. Ambassador Juanita Bynum. Come on, put your hands together all over the building. the Lord tonight. Oh, you can do better than that. I said put your hands together and give God praise for all that he is. Anybody got a real praise in your mouth to God? Come on, anybody got a real praise in your mouth to God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Much better. Much better. Much better. If you can move that podium. Thank you kind of figured if I went down, the people in the back wouldn't be able to see me, so I'll put the table up here. We're going to put the table up here. Now, I ain't going to mess with you, preacher, but if that was, if that was women, they would have had that table picked up already and put... It don't take us long to do nothing, but I give God praise for being in this place tonight. And I honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy toward us and to my daughter in the Lord. And I don't say that slightly. I am so very, very, very proud of you tonight. Somebody ought to put your hands together for Dr. Pedro Jacobs. Oh, you can do better than that. 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 I'm so proud of her tonight, and I'm truly honored. I don't know of many people that I would have left my own conference in New York and been ministering. I see a lady doing this, so y'all turn it up because somebody back there can't hear. Can you turn it up in the house, uh, please? Thank you. Um, because tonight is a very serious night. The Lord um, allowed me to leave my own conference in New York, which started on Wednesday night. And when she called me to ask me to do this, I already had that conference set in motion. And I said, let me pray and ask the Lord. It was like the scripture said, you've asked a hard thing of me to get on the plane and leave the conference Last night, I have not been to bed and then come here and preach and get on the first flight out and have to preach and close the conference out tomorrow night. But when you see women of God that have come from where she's come from and continue to persevere, a real mother can't leave their child wanting. And so let it be said tonight, I really am her real mama. I whoops her and all of that. I'm her real mama. But I am proud of her and I believe that I am here because this is a divine plan of God. And I am excited to be here. And most of all, just in case I didn't say it yet, I'm excited for all of my babies in this audience. Every last one of y'all. Every last one of you all. And to all of the pastors and elders and preachers that are represented in this place, I honor the Lord for you as well. You all may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have, I, I'm so honored also to have, I believe that, Kim, I believe you my oldest child. Stand up. 
this was my, my daughter, I think. How, how old is Simone now? She's almost 30, and Kim came into my life when her daughter was two years old, and she was living in the projects and broken, and I went to run a revival, and her little baby was playing in the aisle, and I said, I don't even know who you are, and I said, but the Lord told me to take you home with me, and I made her pack her bags and took her to New York, and she lived in my house till the Lord prospered her, and Simone grew up in private schools and going to the best of everything. And now she has built a house from the ground and married, and God has blessed her with a, an amazing job. I'm telling you, we ought to, y'all, we ought to put our hands together for a finished work. I don't believe that we have a right to touch anybody's life unless you can process them to the end. We don't need nobody else to prop us up. You need nobody else to just tickle your ears. I need somebody to process my life all the way to the end. And don't let me drop until the people can see a finished work. And that's why I told the Lord when he told me to sit down on that Facebook page, I knew the responsibility because I wasn't going to be sitting there to tickle anybody's ears. I was going to be sitting there until I could see a finished work. And so you ought to bless God tonight for the finished work. Thank you, musicians. Get your Bibles if you would. Get your Bibles if you would. Give me some more in here as much as you can. Take me over into the red if you have to. Thank you, God. I feel I'm in this place crazy. I feel it in here. I'm going to tell you, be perfectly honest with you. When I came today, um, I got ready to come to church. Well, got ready to get my things together to come here. And um, I said to the Lord, I said, God, I want to know what is this I'm feeling and so, and I'll tell you why, because I'm used to now, um, when I travel, I bring two outfits. I bring the cute dress and the white dress. Because, <laughs> see, I got to know what people want, because the oil that I have, it, it costs too much to waste it. And I don't waste oil. So sometimes people want a message. And I can give you a message in a cute dress. But then every now and then when you feel like somebody won't deliver it. Every now and then when you feel like somebody want to be free. Then that's a different kind of thing. And today I was in the car. Thank you Jesus. And I brought both of, both of the dresses. And when we got off the expressway and turned the power God hit me in the car. And I went up in tongues and I looked at my sister and I said it's the white dress. Because somebody going to come on through tonight. So in my, in my, in my, in my search after the Lord, because I don't know about it. Listen, I'm searching. I'm still searching. It's like you, 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 you in one dimension. Somebody say, you know, you go from level to level. I'm, I'm through with levels. I'm, I'm talking about dimensions. Because, see, let me tell you the difference between a level and a dimension. These, these steps are levels. Where there is no step is a dimension. And when you go in, I heard my, my prophetic brother say, when you go into another dimension, you got to break out of one dimension, but you also got to break into another dimension. You just don't come out of a dimension and then you just stay in, you know, in middle ways the road. You got to break out of a dimension. You got to make, listen, you got to break out of the dimension of uh, your truth and your reality, but then you got to break into the dimension of the truth and the reality of the spirit realm because there's another, there's another realm. There's a, there's a God realm. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a God realm. There's a God realm that, 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 that sits 
over all of us all the time, constantly, 24 hours a day, even while we sleep. And the God realm remains there just in case somebody want to come into it. So, so in my seeking God, because about maybe nine years ago, right at nine years ago, I stopped reading my Bible to preach. And I started reading my Bible to live. And there is a difference because when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you read your Bible to, to preach, then the possibility of you reading something that you understand, I, I, I'm reading what I understand. But because I want that understanding in my understanding, my level of the understanding doesn't contain power to help me to walk out what I read. So if you read the Bible and you're disconnected from the spirit that wrote the Bible, then what you are getting is an understanding, but you're not getting revelation. And revelation is a thing that transforms us. Because, see, I had to find out that, that, that nobody can teach you God. God has to be revealed to you. I'm not hearing nobody in here. See, I don't, care, I, don't, I don't care what kind of shape you in tonight. I don't care if you came here tonight and said, Dr. Bottom, I'm not all that God wants me to be. If you in here, you have been selected for God to reveal himself to you. Touch your neighbor and say, it's coming, it's coming. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me, it's coming. Don't worry about me. I know I may look a little crazy and I may look a little funny. And I may not have a, have a light on my countenance that they say you get when you get the baptism, but tell them, don't, don't get scared of me. I'm, you know, I'm in here, I'm in here. Ain't nothing nobody can do about that. Because you just don't come to a, a Juanita Bonham meeting. You don't, you don't come near me unless you really want to go all the way with God. No, you don't just come in here talking about I just want to, I just want to see her. God help us tonight, Jesus. Give it to us. And so, and so people of God. Go with me to the book of Leviticus. I, I want. I want to. I have to read some stuff that um that the Lord gave me. Um, I want to go to. I want to go to uh, the book of Leviticus, the sixth chapter, and the eighth through the thirteenth verse. Um, give me my Bible. I want to. I want to. I got the laptop up here because I got to read a, a, a definition. I'm old school. I just, I just love the Bible. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I said, I just love the Bible. Somebody said, I got my Bible right here on my laptop. I got it right here on my phone. The same phone you cuss people out with. That ain't sacred. You texting people all kind of foolish. Just talking about, I got my Bible right here. That ain't sacred. That ain't sacred. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm against that generation that refused to touch a Bible. Because a Bible is sacred. Your laptop and your phone ain't. And if you don't be careful, the devil will keep messing with us until he moves us away from everything that is sacred. Tell your neighbor, get you a Bible if you ain't got one. Tell him, Dr. Bynum said, don't be coming to church using your phone. Because while you listening to the pastor, somebody texting you from home. And you answering texts and then going back to the scripture. The enemy want us distracted. He want us distracted. Good Lord, have mercy. Now let's read the Bible. <laughs> Leviticus, the sixth chapter. And the 8th through the 13th verse. 
it says, command Aaron. It says, command Aaron and his son, saying, this is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall remain on the altar all night until morning. The fire shall be kept burning on the altar. And the priest shall put on his linen garments. And put his linen breeches on his body. And take up the ashes of what the fire has consumed. With the burnt offering on the altar and put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments. And put on other garments. And carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning on it. And it shall not be allowed to go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And it shall burn on it the fat of the piece of the offerings. The fire shall be burning continually upon the altar. It shall not go out. Father God, we thank you for the reading of your mighty word. We thank you, God, because we have no understanding that can ever comprehend what you're trying to say. We thank you because you've drawn us all in this place, and therefore I know you got something to say. And God, I don't come in this place as a preacher. I come in here as the hearer. Because I want my spirit to hear what you're trying to say to us. But Father, we recognize that we are the lost generation and the confused generation. But we thank you, God, because in you is the mercy of God. In you, God, we are experiencing a grace that we have never seen before. But God, help us to realize that we can't play with your grace. Help us to realize, God, that you're calling us to attention, Lord. Help us to realize, God, that the hour is turning, God, and it's almost time for you to crack the scalp. And we don't want to be weighed in the balance and found warning. And so, God, we ask him that you would open up the ears of our spirit, not the ears of our intellect. And allow our spirit to catch something and harness something. That even in the dark hour, God, that word will wake up and shake us back to life. And so we thank you for it in advance because your credit is good with us and you ain't never lied to us. And when you call us to come to you, oh, that means change is the inevitable. And for that, God, we open up our mouth tonight and we give you a shout in advance for what you have already done for us in the spirit. Somebody give him a shout right now. Glory to God, you may take your seat. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm in a, I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle. So the battle is, the Lord started talking to me the other day about coming here, and he kept, he kept saying one word over and over and over again. He kept saying the altar. The altar. And so I said, God, what do, you, what do you mean the altar? He said the altar. The altar. Do you know what an altar is? I said, yeah, I know what an altar is, God. We, we always on altar. We, we come to the altar. I said, what do you think an altar is? I said, well, you know what the altar is? They built you an altar. This is, this is, this is, this is in my head. They built you an altar and the altar was erected in your honor and all throughout the course of the Bible, people built you on altars and the altars were constructed and some of those altars are still in the Holy Land today. And he said, that's not an altar, that's a brick. That's not an altar, that's an image. He said, that's not an altar. He said, that's an image. He said, but do you know how it becomes, how the image becomes an altar? Because in order for an image to become an altar, then the image must contain the power to change us. Because the altar, 
The altar doesn't mean a thing. The altar means an experience. The altar means that when I perfectly understand it, it does something to me. It does something with my life. When I really, really understand the power of the altar, it, it, it means that, 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 that every time I approach it, something in me happens. I start changing and, 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 and I look up and I don't even know when stuff left me. I mean, I, I, maybe, 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 maybe I got somebody in here that feel that way. I mean, you just woke up one day and, and something that you used to struggle with, you don't struggle with it anymore. And you don't even remember when it left. You don't even remember when you lost your appetite. But then the question is, uh, I, I, Dr. Barnum, I just start praying, but I ain't been to church and I don't know when, but something done changed in me. So then is this the altar? Because see, what he keeps saying to me is that if we don't, if we don't correct, if we don't, if we don't bring a correction to what the altar really is, then, watch this. Listen, please, please listen to this. An altar erected in the spirit realm will bring about change, whether it is a spiritual constructive change. It is a, if, it, if, if it is an altar that's built by, by satanic people, it will still change you. I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm going to say it one more time. If it's an altar, so let me bring it on home because y'all, y'all looking at me like, yeah, that's right, because I'm talking about satanic. I'm talking about Satan in the church. I'm talking about if the altar is built by a half cock pastor who don't know God, who ain't serving God, I, I'm not hearing you, and you continue to approach that altar, it is going to change you. I'm not hearing y'all. But, but, but what is it going to change me into? It's going to change me into the likeness of the spirit that built it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And so all over the body of Christ now, we don't even have a clear revelation of what save is, of what altar is, about what the Holy Ghost is. I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Everybody got their own rendition. Man of God, am I right? Everybody got their own version. And so, because we have our own version, now we have a spirit of rebellion that is all over the church where, watch this, where there is no accountability. God said to me the year 2017 would be the year of accountability. Now everybody living their own kind of salvation. And see, that's a result of, watch this, that's a result of not having clarity about what the altar does. Somebody, ooh, John, he just told me, he said, take your time in here tonight because, because you preaching, people, people been preaching for people to be happy, but we got to preach so that people can be made whole. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We got to preach the kind of gospel that'll stick to your ribs. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We got to preach the kind of gospel that causes us, oh my God, for the conviction of God to wake up in your belly. And there's just some things we don't have to preach about because my spirit won't let me do it. Tell somebody said my spirit won't let me do it. Come on, tell somebody on the other side, my spirit won't let me do it. Watch this. So this, 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 this barber just gave us a criteria. He said the altar, uh, you ought to, you ought to build the altar. Watch this. You ought to, you ought to, you ought to build the altar. And when you get through building the altar, then you got to change into some other clothes. Watch this. You got to change into some other clothes. Because now that you have built an altar, you got to change into my wardrobe so that they don't see you, they see me. And so, so they, don't think it's, they don't think it's your altar, but they know now that it's my altar. 
But, but, but watch this. So then he says, and then you're going to build a fire. And then after you build this fire, you're going to put the sacrifices on the altar. And so I had about, I had about five different titles. And I said, God, well, well which one of these titles is you talking about today? Because I sat there in the middle of the bed. And he said, the call to the altar. I said, okay, the call. Yeah, I got a lot. Okay. He said, then, uh-uh. He said, uh, then the forsaken altar. Where was uh, the power of the forsaken altar? I said, okay. He said, he said then, then, then the power of the altar lost in translation. I said, God, I got that too. He said, he said then, then this one right here was, Lord, 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 help me to find the right altar. And so, and so, and so when he said, when he said, Lord, help me, help me, help me to find the right altar. Help me to find the right altar. I, I, I said, God, he said, what are you trying to say to me? And, and, and we said, oh, all I kept seeing in a vision was a crowd of people running to the altar. But in this vision, it was an open vision that I had the other night. In the vision, you would think that everybody was on the altar and everybody was praising God. But when I looked close, the Lord said, look close. I looked close. Everybody was on their knees on the altar, but they were fighting each other on the altar. Oh, you don't hear me. They were, they were, they were nudging each other on the altar. And it appeared that it wasn't enough room on the altar. And I said, God, I said, what are you saying? What are you saying? He said, I want you to look at this. Keep reading about altars. So then I went to the book of Exodus and then I went to the book of Psalms, the 43rd chapter, and they start talking about the altar, the altar of the Lord. And I said, my God, he said, the altar of the Lord. I said, okay, well, it's the altar of the Lord. He said, no, I really want you to understand me. He said, the altar of the Lord. What is the altar of the Lord? I said, okay, God, I'll just search that out. So I start searching through the scriptures, and it starts saying, it is because of the light of your truth and the light of your anointing that it brings me to the mountain that I may approach the altar of the Lord, which is the holies of holies. I said, well, okay, God, it's the altar. He said, no, 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 no. You got to really see what I'm saying here. He said, the altar, there's confusion on the altar. He said, because, he said, because there is a brazen altar for sacrifice for people that keep on sinning. He said, but, 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 wait, 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 wait. You don't come to the altar of the Lord so you can get saved. The altar of the Lord is not the entrance place for you to get saved. The altar of the Lord is for the people that's tired of sinning and ready to step over into another power of God. The Bible says that the altar of the Lord is the holies of holies and sinners don't come to this altar. You got sin in your life. You can't approach that altar. Everybody want to come to the altar, but the Bible said that we are likened unto Ephraim. Well, we got altars, but the Bible said that they built these altars. Listen, y'all. Whoa. They built the altars so that they can continue to see. Okay. I'm not getting nobody to talk to me. Because see, we, y'all, see, I'm on y'all side. I'm over in here. I told my pastor, I'm a millennial. I'm, he switched me over. I was with the other people. And then he took me underground you ain't hearing me I said he took me underground so I can come up 
with another generation. And so my generation of people, we are not the generation that wants stability in God. We're the generation that wants us to create an altar so I can have permission to keep on sinning. Can, can, can y'all sit down? Sit down. Because we feel, we, we feel comfortable every time we come to church. Because that right there. We feel, we don't feel too afraid when we come to the house of the Lord. Because we see them steps. So we know what the pastor say. Anybody want to get it right with God? Here we come. I'm not hearing y'all. But the problem with that, the problem with that, cousin, my cousin's right here. The problem with that, the problem with that is that when the pastor said anybody want to get it right, here we come. But the problem with that is that the people that's coming is the people that got saved six months ago and the people that got saved 20 years ago. Okay, ain't nobody talking to me. Ain't nobody talking to me. Oh, I ain't hear nobody say nothing. Uh-huh. It's the people that got saved last month and the people that's been saved for 10 years. Everybody is back on the same altar and now the altar is crowded and now we fighting because, because the altar is crowded because somebody don't belong up here. Somebody on the wrong altar. Let me walk on back here because y'all know. I said somebody. Somebody on the wrong altar. You've been saved more than three years. You're on the wrong altar. Get up, Oshaya. You've been saved for more than five years. You're on the wrong altar. Oh, 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 oh. You still talking about Lord deliver me from that? No, you on the wrong altar. The power of God is not limited. Who am I talking to? Wait, 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 wait. When, when Saul was on the road to Damascus and he met Jesus and he was persecuting the saints I didn't hear nobody talk to me and he was instructing people to put them to death when he met Jesus now maybe sis, they got all these Bibles out so you can help me out well show me the Bible that said and when he met Jesus then he, didn't, he, he, he only killed a hundred people today he used to kill 10,000 a day. He only did 100 a day. And then a few more days later, he only killed 50. Oops, he went back and killed 500 over here. But at least it wasn't the 10,000 he used to kill. Okay, here we go again. Uh -huh. oh, the Lord, I thank you because I only killed 20 people. You still a murderer. Lord, I thank you, but I only killed two people. You still a murderer. I'm not hearing y'all. See, 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 watch this. What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Because the vessels of the Lord are refusing to purify to the next dimension. We have no alternative but to preach a gospel of understanding. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. We have no alternative but to preach a gospel that makes the person think that they can just stop. I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to? The power of God contains the power to Get in your belly and suck the very vibration of sin out of you till you never want it again. Touch your neighbor and tell them why you graduating. Jesus is on his way back. Turn around and tell them what grade you're going to be in when he comes. Mm, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Let me do this. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Watch this. Watch this. 
Watch this. Watch this, y'all. So then he says to him, now, now listen, listen, listen. This, this, this right here got me. Listen, listen, he said to him, he said, now, now, if you continue like this, he said, what's wrong is, now the book of Hosea, the eighth chapter, and the 10th verse goes into effect. Because now, he said, if you continue with these kinds of altars. Now, see, I'm, I'm prophesying already. I just use the scripture. So if you want to argue with the word, you argue with God. Good luck with that. He said, if you continue to use this method, this method of the crowded altar, this method of all of us just keep coming to Jesus together. It didn't even work like that when the whole, before the Holy Ghost came. The children of Israel were the children of Israel. The priests were the priests. I'm not hearing y'all. Some of y'all came to the outer court. I'm not hearing y'all. Some of y'all came to the inner court. I'm not hearing y'all. But there was some that were sanctified to come to the holies of holies. Do not tell me. We all, just, we all just coming together. He said, how do I know that we are in this kind of dispensation of the altar of confusion? Because it says, as you continue to use this kind of altar, this altar will grow all by itself. Listen, listen. Crabgrass and thistles. Okay. Crabgrass. What is crabgrass? See if we sound familiar. Crabgrass is a creeping grass. You don't want to be held accountable. You want to creep in church every now and then. And because that's the kind of altar that you that you used to approach it, uh, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. You 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 operating like crabgrass, and that's why every now and then you got to creep somewhere. Every now and then, can't nobody give an account to where you was. Every now and then, you disappear out of church for 10 and 15 weeks at a time and then walk on back in like, but nobody, nobody asked me where I've been. Because, honey, listen, I walk by grace and I ain't got an answer to nobody but God. No, the devil is a lie. That's a creeping spirit. I, I'm not hearing y'all. Uh, the crab grass anointing is what's got you. I'm not hearing y'all. Wait a minute. It says it's a creeping grass. Watch this. Because I'm going to read it to you because I don't want you to say she made that up. I wrote this down out the dictionary. It's a creeping grass that can become a serious weed. Listen to y'all. A serious weed. Watch this. Watch this. It is a creeping grass that becomes a serious weed that is not wanted. And because it is not wanted, it immediately puts itself in competition with the cultivated grass. So now we can't get along in the body of Christ because, because we're in competition with each other. Because somebody in here is, is crab grass. Uh, what, is, what, is, what is cultivated grass? Cultivated grass is those that have been taught by the Spirit. Cultivated grass is that how do I know I've been taught? Because I follow what I have heard. Because I've heard it with my spirit and not my intellect. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I need to hear an amen right there. Because creeping grass. Man of God, it says it's a weed. And a weed, it says, is a wild grass that cannot be controlled. 
and it goes where it wants to go. Oh, you don't hear me. And it goes into areas that it doesn't belong in. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It goes into ministry and God didn't call it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It calls itself a prophet, but God didn't call it. How do I know that? Because it still lies. It still fornicates. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Who am I preaching to? And then it goes. How was it able to stay alive? How was it able to stay alive? Because it says it produces leaves, which means it goes after people that is crabgrass too. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It goes out of people. It goes after people that is crabgrass too. And that's why they can't see that they being deceived because everybody's of the same nature. Oh no, there's some leaves there, but they wild leaves. There's some leaves there, but you got to look real close because you can't really figure it out. But in your spirit, you can look and say, something about that is just not right. Watch this. And that spirit will call you to the altar. But it's a bunch of wild leaves that's on the altar. A bunch of wild weeds. Wait, wait, wait. That's the crabgrass. Thistle. A thistle is a beautiful flower that's got pokey sticks all over it. Even on its underbidding, even on its stems, which means you can't grab it nowhere to try to cultivate it without it sticking you. Because it, it's built with a weapon against correction sticking out of it. Okay, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying nothing to nobody right here. No, 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 no. Uh, anytime you can't correct somebody, a thistle. Uh, because it says, it says, it says, it protects anybody from, from, from really getting to the beauty that it's created. Wait, 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 wait. And what is the worst part about it? It said the reason why those pokey things are, are sticking out. Watch this. Because it doesn't want anybody to feed off of it. It don't want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. It don't want to minister to nobody. It don't want to witness to nobody. It don't want to go to the hospital. Don't bring your problem to me. You are a vessel. I just want to keep the beauty I got. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I just want to keep what I got. I'm preaching for real. I'm preaching for real. But do you know where the thistles and the crab, the crab grasses come from? The thistles and the crab grasses come from when you become a thistle and a crab grass and you are wild and uncontrollable. It is because you are under a curse because the intent of your nature, you was intended to be a leaf, you was intended to be a flower, but the intent of your nature now has to be changed because in your beauty and your growth, you're of rebellion. And so, wait, wait. that's them people that's always doing stuff. And you say, why you doing I'm just so sorry. I don't even know why I did that. Because, see, your leave is out of control. Your thistles is out of control. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because the altar that he called you to originally. Who? The altar that was running with the blood of Jesus to wash you and save you. 
you came to that altar. But then when you left it, you kept taking that altar for granted. And so the reason why now you're growing thistles and crab trees is because what we don't understand is the dimensions of time with God. See, the reason why I had to come here, the reason why I had to come here, because, because everything is dimensions and time with God. See, watch this. When God gets ready to break a people to another dimension, and he said the time is now, I don't care that I'm in a conference, because I cannot allow you to miss the dimensions and the times of God. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not. So see, when God is calling you to another dimension, you don't get to decide when you're going to come. When he calls you, you got to come now. Wait a minute. Why must I come now? Why must I come now? Why did I have to get on a plane now? Why did you have to get in here now? Why are some people that can't get no ticket? Why? Now. What's about, what is it about now? So you got to look at this thing, sis. Baby girl, you got to look at this thing. Now, now, the altar in here tonight only have a certain amount of minutes to be a soul saving altar before God changes it. You, 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 don't, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. How can I make this? Man of God, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Just go down there and kneel on the first altar. Kneel down, knees on the floor. Knees on the floor. So we. He kneeling down and said, altar. Is the Lord saying me altar? Is the Lord going to give me altar? I'm like, okay, God, you, you done already told us what you want us to do. Now, when I say switch, I want y'all to get up and go up two steps. Kneel down, okay? Okay. When you, 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 you. When I say switch, you go. Okay. Okay. Switch. Now, everybody up here just went to another dimension. They not down there telling my same Jesus. They just went to another dimension. Oh, are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Come on, come on, come on. Next row, next row, next row. Come on. Switch. Y'all go all the way to the wall. All the way to the wall. They getting ready to go into the holies of holies over here. They seeking God. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. Um, they seeking God. Because guess why? The altar has changed. Now it went from an altar of salvation to an altar. Come on somebody. Of deliverance. Unto the altar of the holies of holies. Which means what is the altar of the holies of holies? It's the altar of service. It's the altar of son. I done stopped sinning. Now I'm ready to serve God. Now. Next row. Y'all get ready. But this time. When I say switch. Don't nobody switch. Don't nobody move, okay? Okay. Switch! See the pole. Come on, don't nobody move. Come on. Next row. Switch! Don't nobody move. The little sinners trying to find a, they trying to find a little spot. People that's on crack, prostitutes, and, and you ain't hearing me. They, they trying to find a spot. Switch next row. Oh, it's getting crowded now. Now, now, now the sinner can't even get to the altar of salvation because the saints won't stop sinning. I'm not hearing y'all. Switch. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, come on. Next 
row sweat. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. All two of y'all row sweat. Come on. Come on, get in there. Hurry up. All of y'all, two rows, two rows. Sweat. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. It's crowded. Look at that. Sinners can't get to the altar. Look at that. Because the saints still talking about, Lord, forgive me. Y'all ain't saying that. Now, oh, shut up. Somebody better say him up in here. He done called you to preach, and you still sinning. He done called you to prophesy, and you still sinning. He done called you to lay hands on the sick, and you still fornicate. Who am I talking to in here? So now. So now. The church, I want you to see this. Hope y'all just get down there too. I want, I want y'all to see this. Now I want this row to come, this row to come, and kneel right here. I want this row to come and kneel right here. I'm going to show you what we looking like now. Now people, look at this. People. Who's supposed to be intercessors is in the outer court kneeling down. I'm not hearing y'all. I just wish I had a church in here. I wish I had a church in here. Look at that lady's face right there in the black. Raise your hand. You can see God all over her. But what would you think would happen to a sinner if she can just get a look closer to the altar to lay hands on a sinner? But she can't because the saints won't stop sinning. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Who am I preaching in here? What is the Holy Ghost saying? We gotta untie the altar. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta annihilate the The crowded confusion. How do I know it's crowded confusion? Because I'm, 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 I'm hearing something. That ain't no sinner. What she just said? That ain't no sinner. So what's she doing all the way down here? She's supposed to be up there getting ready to go into the holies of holy. But, but, but somebody's church's altar didn't move. And so instead of your church growing, you start losing people. Because you can't keep on keeping the people that's living holy stuck in the back somewhere. And they can't be used of God. I'm not hearing y'all. Because of all the hypocrites you want to still have in the front of your church. Because they give you big tithes. They give you big offering. Ain't nobody stuck no money. I'm not hearing y'all. Go to job and get some money. Ain't nobody stuck about money. Our loved ones need deliverance. I need to get to that altar. Because if I don't use what God has given me now, you may can me come under a penalty <laughs> now now children of Israel the wilderness was your blessing for only three days. And when you stayed 40 years, it became the place where some of y'all died at. And that's what the Holy Ghost said. You got saints dying in the church. You got saints backsliding right from the pews of the church. You got them not fornicating with each other. They not slipping with nobody out there. They start to cannibalize each other. You know why? Because the altar of their church is stuck. And there is a nature in us that we were built with. And this nature is, now this is going to bless you. The nature is, I was built to be used by a spirit. And so if the Lord don't use me. 
That don't mean my spirit going to stop craving to be used. I just wish somebody would just say something right there. I just wish somebody would say something right there. It don't mean that craving ain't going to stop. And watch this. When you are out of the will of God and God is not using you, you are in a backslidden state because now you are in forced rebellion. And rebellion is witchcraft. Now the enemy sends the next spirit that is going to use you since the church's altar is confused. So then you find yourself keeping the extra change. It wasn't but $2 at the grocery store. But I don't feel like if my feet hurt, I ain't going all the way back there to give her that change. Then you find yourself starting to curse again. The devil just tell you they just made me mad. But what he didn't tell you, that the scripture said that he that cursed Curses his own life to the bone. Which means every time you say a curse word, you just cursed your own life to the bone. Oh, Now you done lost your tongues. Now your tongues is confused. Your altar and your church is confused. Your tongues is confused. And because you're not able to operate in the power of God. Because guess what? When you open up your mouth and you allow God to use you. Your own tongue become a harness to your life. Your own tongue becomes your prophet. I'm not hearing you. And when you can't do that, then the devil start making you talk crazy. Then you start talking about, I might as well give up. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And you know what? I'm just sick of all this. And it ain't going to never change. it. It's going to always. You know why? Because you done slid back to another dimension. But God is saying tonight. I'm about to shift this altar And I don't care what you stand in there He said you better make up in your mind tonight That it's time for me to shift I'm not no sinner I don't belong on no sinner's offering I belong on the altar Of the holies of holies See right 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 now you, you, you. Let me help y'all with this one so you can help each other right now. Because some people, some people came in here tonight because they, you know, they was in a backslidden state. And they said, you know, I'm, I'm going to church to get saved tonight because I'm tired. And the Lord let Dr. Biden come here. I ain't going to miss my time. But some of y'all on this altar, you need to turn around and ask them, do you belong, do you belong on, in this dimension? Because I just heard you speaking in tongues. So I, no, no, ask them, say so you belong in this dimension. Because if it's somebody that you just heard speaking in tongues, say that to them. Say, because I just heard you speaking in tongues. Say, you belong. Come on. Come on. This is a demonstration. Ask them that. Say, do you belong in this dimension? Because I just heard you speaking in tongues. And then watch this. I ain't going to let you. I ain't going to let you. I'm not going to allow you to get an answer from them. Now, this is what I want you to do. See, when I was growing up, I was raised by a black mama. I was raised by a black, a black mama. That one that throw their shoe at you. That one that bust your lip and keep you home from school to the hill. I was raised by a black mama. And when mama really got mad, you can tell when a black mama is really mad. Because she don't yell. She hold her teeth together and say, get yourself in that room and sit yourself. I want you to turn around and tell that person you heard speaking in tongues, get yourself up there in the holies of holies and get off this altar. <laughs> 